Hi, how you doing? Pastor Steve Anderson, just want to invite you to Faith Forward Baptist Church. Do you go to church anywhere? Or? Uh, yeah, I go to uh, Grace Community Church. Oh, okay, yeah, right there on Southern Avenue. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, more important than going to church, though, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to heaven? Uh, well, I think so. I'm, you know, I'm a pretty good person. Okay. Well, could I just take a couple minutes and show you how you can know that 100% for sure? Sure. I mean, okay. Well, look. I'll just show you this real quick. It's only take a few minutes, but the Bible says right here in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So we all have sinned. Right, of course. I've sinned, you've sinned. Yeah. Okay, and not only that, but the Bible says we come short. Mm -hmm. So do we measure up to what God expects? No, I mean, we come short, and uh, we've all sinned. Well, there's a punishment for our sin. The Bible says right here in Romans 6, 23, mm -hmm. it says, For the wages of sin is death. So what's God's punishment for our sin? Death. Okay. Well, look, after we die, though, that's not the end. Okay. No. After we die, there's what the Bible talks about, the second death. I'm going to show you that right here in Revelation 20, verse 14. It says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Mm -hmm. So after you die, there's a second death of going to a place called hell, which is the lake of fire, mm -hmm. where you're basically punished and torment, you know, tortured mm -hmm. for your sins. I mean, you have to pay for all your sins you've done your whole life. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Then right over here it says, look, all liars. Now, have you ever told a lie before? Yeah, I think, I think everybody, everybody has. has. Yeah. I mean, every single person. But it says, all liars shall have their part. It lists all these other sins. But then it says, even all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second... So according to this verse, where are all liars going? According to that verse, it says they're going, going to hell. Okay, but look, God loves us, right? Yeah. yeah do you think, if God loves us, does he want us to go to hell? No. No. So because God loves us, but do you think he, do you think that he just said that, he didn't mean it? I mean, obviously, if it's in the Bible, he meant that. That's the punishment that we deserve for our sins. But because God loves us, he doesn't want us to have to pay that punishment. So here's what God did for us. It says in Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so what that basically is talking about, you know, God himself became a human being. Jesus Christ, you know, he's born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned. He lived a perfect life none of us could live, okay? And, of course, you know the story. They, uh, they lied about him, they arrested him, they beat him, they spit on him. Nailed him to the cross, okay? Well, when he was nailed to the cross, the Bible says he who himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree. So what, what it means when it says he bare our sins in his own body, every sin you've ever done in your whole life, every sin I've ever done, when Jesus was on that cross, it was as if he had done it, okay? And so he was being punished for murder, for stealing, for lying, all the sins that we and everyone else in the whole world have committed, he never sinned, but he bore our sins in his own body. Well, he, when he died on the cross, he was being punished for our sins. Okay? They took his body, they buried it in a tomb. His soul went down to hell for three days and three nights. He was punished for our sins. What happened three days later? He rose again. He rose again from dead. Exactly. So, now look. Do you believe that Jesus died for everybody? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. you're right. Because the Bible says that he died not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. But do you think everybody's going to heaven, though? No. Probably not, right? Okay, well, look, I'm going to show you what the difference is, because obviously everybody's not going to have it. What is it that determines who goes and who doesn't? I'm going to show you right now. It says right here in, in Acts 16, verse 30, it says, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Pretty good question, right? Yeah. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now, what does that say that you have to do in order to be saved? says, uh, believe. Believe on the Lord yeah. Jesus. Does that say that you have to go to church? No. Nope. Does it say that you have to be baptized? No. Nope. Does it say that you have to give up any of your sins or be willing to give up sin? Like, Doesn't turn your life that. around, turn over new leaf. Does it say anything like that? What does it say you have to do? Uh, it says, believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now look, I'm going to show you the most famous verse in the whole Bible. John 3, 16. The Bible says right here, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that means whoever, mm -hmm. whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm. should not perish, but have everlasting life. And look at verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Mm -hmm. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Now look, we see just from those three verses, I mean, I can show you hundreds, mm -hmm. but the point is that 
it says that everyone who believes on Jesus Christ will be saved. I mean, it says here, whosoever believeth, he that believeth is not condemned. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay. Now, does that say whosoever is good enough? No. Yep. Whosoever lives a good life, joins the church? No. It says whosoever believeth in him. Okay. Now, did you notice how it... Well, let me show you one more verse. But did you notice how it says believe on? He that believeth on him is not condemned. And it said in uh, Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason... We would normally think of believe in. Believe in would be, well, I believe that Jesus is real, you know, he died on the cross, and so forth. When you're saying you believe on him, it means you're putting your faith on him to get you to heaven. Like, you don't think you're going to heaven because of anything that you're doing. You're a sinner, you come to, you're putting your faith on him to save you. But I'm going to show you one last verse that kind of uh, ties the whole thing together. Okay, and this will wrap up the whole thing. It says right here, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, is a gift something you have to earn, or is it free? A gift is free. Yeah, exactly. Now look, who pays for a gift? The giver or the receiver? The person giving the gift. The person giving the gift. Mm -hmm. Who's giving us eternal life? Uh, God is. God. So who's got to pay for it? God does. He already paid for it. When he shed his blood on the cross, Jesus Christ paid for our salvation. He paid for our eternal life. Mm -hmm. Now look, if I were to give you the gift, and I said, uh, what's your name by the way? Uh, Dave. Okay, if I said, Dave, I'm going to give you this Bible as a gift, mm -hmm. but I need you to give me five dollars. Is that a gift? <laughs> Yep. Okay, what if I said, okay, Dave, I'm going to give it to you for free, but I need you to wash my car? Still it's still not a gift. Yeah. If you have to do any work for it, it's not a gift. Okay. But what if I said, I'm giving this to you for free? Just take it. Now, look, who does that Bible belong to now that I gave it to you? It's yours now. Now, can I come back anytime I want and just take it away from you? No. No. What if I come back like a few months from now and you've done something wrong to me? Can I just come in your house and just take this and take it away? No. No, it belongs to you. I, that would make me what? A thief. a thief and a liar. Well, look, the Bible says right here that God has given to us eternal life. It says in 1 John 5, 10, actually, that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Now, if God gave it to us, then it belongs to us, okay? He's not going to take it away from you. you can't, what I'm trying to say is you can't lose your salvation. I mean, once you're saved, it's eternal life, okay? It lasts, uh, do you know what eternal means? It's forever. Forever. So, if you, if you get it and it lasts forever, how many times do you think you have to get that? Once. One time. Is it, could you ever lose it? I mean, think about it. If I said, Dave, I'm giving you this Bible forever, and then I took it back for any reason, was I telling the truth when I said I was giving it to you forever? No. So if I say I'm giving it to you forever, it better last forever. Okay? So if God is giving to us eternal life, that's going to last forever. You can't lose it. Jesus said it this way, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay? So no matter if you quit church... If, even if you did something awful, like kill somebody or even kill yourself, okay? God will not take away your salvation from you. Because look, you weren't good enough to get saved anyway. We come short. We're sinners. The only reason that we're going to heaven is through the blood of Jesus. And so you can't be good enough to get saved. You don't have to be good to stay saved. I mean, it's, it's by grace through faith, okay? So once you're saved, you're always saved. It's eternal life. It's a gift, okay? And as soon as God took it back, he's a, he's a liar. And God, the Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So you can't lose it. So let me ask you this, Dave. Do you believe you've sinned? Yeah, of course. Okay. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Yeah. And you believe he rose again from the dead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, according to what I showed you in the Bible right here, if you were to ask Jesus to save you right now, would he do it? Yeah. And how long would you be saved? Forever. No matter what if you, what if you do something terrible? It's eternal. It's eternal. You can't lose it. It's a gift, okay? So look, I, what I want to do, Dave, you said you believe that uh, if, you're, if you were to pray and ask Jesus to save you right now, he'd do it, you'd be saved forever. I want to help you pray that right now, okay? Right. I just want to help you tell God that that's what you believe so that you'll know that you're going to heaven. You can just ask to be saved right now. Let's bow our heads right now. You can just repeat this after me, okay? okay. And pray this to God. Go ahead and bow your head All and right. just pray this with me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. I know I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you died on the cross for me. But I believe that you died on the cross for me. And rose again. And rose again. Please save me right now. Please save me right now. And give me eternal life. And give me eternal life. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, now you meant that, right? Yeah, of course. Look, that's all the Bible says that you have to do to be saved. Right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Do you have a Bible? Uh...